Welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. We got a little square body action going on tonight. Let me show you what I'm dealing with. Tonight we're talking transfer cases, specifically the Chevy MP208 that is in this 1986 Chevy K5 Blazer. These are very common transfer cases in a lot of the square bodies, and they're not bad cases. Uh, the issue really is that they don't have any aftermarket support. So everybody that goes hard with wheeling usually goes back to an MP205, gear-driven cast iron box, or they'll move forward to the MP241, which came in some of the later model uh, Blazers and Suburbans. But anyway, I'm not interested in swapping with any of those. I do want to stick with the 208 just because they're plentiful and it's never done me wrong. However, we do want to make some changes to it. What I want to do is get rid of the factory slip yoke and build a slip yoke eliminator for this. Now the reasons being for that is I just built this new 14 bolt here. It's a high ground clearance. Um, Came out really nice. I got a video on how to build all that if you guys are interested. Before I can weld the spring perches in, I wanna get a pinion angle that I'm happy with and the pinion angle that I'm happy with is gonna require me to run a CV at the transfer case, which just works better with a flange up here. Actually kinda of like what we use up front here, there's a flange going to a CV there as well. So let's take a look at one of these on the bench. So I got a spare transfer case here for parts on the bench that we can play with. Now, I'm not a huge, like, I'm not an anti-slip yoke guy. I have one on my Jeep and it's fine. I've never had the shaft pop out, never had any problems. But what happens is when you're working on a K5 Blazer, the wheelbase is generally pretty short compared to a pickup. The longer your shafts are, the less your U-joint angle, the more happy everything is. So my thoughts here are, if I can cut this housing down a fair bit, even if I get two or three inches out of it, put a flange on it, I can move that U-joint forward quite a bit. In normal operation, that U-joint is hanging all the way out here. So if we can come up here, I'll gain, you know, four, five, six inches of drive shaft length. That'll make my U-joints a lot happier. So I bought this from WFO Concepts. Hopefully help with this project. All right, this is a transfer case output flange, kind of like you'd have on uh, an MP241 that has a slip yoke eliminator or maybe an MP205 and this should fit nice fits the splines of the output shaft for this and it's dual drilled so it'll fit two different bolt patterns of U-joints and this pilot or this bore I think is two inch I forget what I ordered but whatever I ordered was very common very easy to get uh, 1350 CVs for let's pull this tail housing off of here All right, so now we're getting into the meat and potatoes here. And here's kind of what my thoughts are. Just bringing this all the way in. Something like that or so. Hacking her off, tapping it. And then 208 has a support bearing right here. Ideally, I'd like to uh, cut it off, you know, right after that support bearing. Hmm, yeah, I don't like... I don't want to spill the beans everywhere, meaning I don't want the needle bearing to fly apart. And then I'm caught cleaning up the mess. So another option that exists is, another option I explored at least, would be running two front flanges on here. And this is called a 3R pattern, I believe. Um, it's not as common, it's GM only, but there are you know, plenty of aftermarket support for these. And this will fit the output shaft as well. These are both 32 spline, uh, front and rear output on the MP208. So this flange is an option if you wanted to go really cheap with it and you had another parts transfer case laying around, that might be an option for you. It's a shame this isn't splined all the way to the bearing support, but now I've got to make the decision of how much spline is enough spline. This flange has an inch and a half of splines in it. So coming down to this mark here would give me best case scenario of full engagement on the output shaft. So I think that's where I'm gonna start with. Pop the tail support bearing out. It's 
pretty cool piece of shaft to just have. This output shaft is dialed in the lathe. All right, so the homemade steady rest served its purpose. I was able to face most of this and get a center right there. So now I can support it with the tailstock again. Now what we're dealing with is the hard, the hardened area here needs to get faced off. I'm gonna play around with a CBN insert. rigged up a CBN insert into one of these old tool holders I have. And the results are phenomenal. I mean, look at this. Excellent surface finish right through the hard splines. I'm not super stoked on those welds. My mask is acting up. I'm out of beer. I'm drinking White Claws now. So this is what I get. A bunch of crap welds. But anyway, it's all one piece now that's going to work just fine. And I didn't blow through that outer bore at all. So that'll still fit the drive shaft. With the tail housing cleaned up, I put the case back together temporarily. We've got our flange bolted on, so this is what it's going to look like. Now we need to determine how far to shorten our tail housing to move our seal surface to where it needs to be. We're really risking it for the biscuit here. Let me show you why. Uh, my boring bar <clears throat> is not big enough to bore this in a vertical configuration, so I had to move my tool out the side. But now, look at this clearance right here. <whistles> that is tantalizing. But she clears, so I gotta make a couple passes through here to make some space for my tool. And then I think we're gonna be in great shape. Just gonna be a little puckering for the first cut. Castings were machined to stop the seal, so the seal's got an excellent seat there, so it doesn't go too far in. Like that, we've got a seal pressed in here. Looks good. Before I pull the good transfer case apart, I figured I'd get you guys some measurements if you're interested. From transfer case face to center of the U-joint with the slip yoke in, uh, where it would usually ride. So this thing will pull out another four inches. It'll come in another inch or so. Say on average, we're about 13 and a half inches there. On the modified case, the flange is seven and a half inches off the face. And we'll say the center of the U-joint would probably be around eight and a half. So it looks like overall with this setup, we extended our shaft length about five inches, which is pretty substantial on a Chevy Blazer that only has maybe a 40 inch drive shaft. So definitely met my goals with this one uh, as for you know simplicity and also for getting that longer shaft and being able to run a CV easily up at the transfer case. Installed, new flange on here, it happens to fit a F-250 Super Dookie front shaft, shortened three inches. 
and then down to my 14 bolt. Now, if you look at that pinion angle, I have just a slight amount of negative pinion angle. Without a CV up here, this thing would be like down here. So it's kind of hard to tell, but you know, she's rocked back quite a bit, which is nice for ground clearance. And it keeps that pinion up and out of the way without vibrations. Anyway, that's kind of what this looks like all put together here. All right, guys, that wraps up another episode of Spank Ranch Garage. Happy to have this little project done. I got a million of these like projects in my head. I just don't have enough time to keep executing them. So I'm just getting to them when I can. So I'm happy to breed a little life into this old MP208 Chevy version. Um, you know, the aftermarket, as far as I know, does not support a slip yoke eliminator for this. Basically, the best you could do is a hack and tap, cut the end off, or not even cut the end off, just put a yoke on it and thread it on. So this takes it a little bit um, to the next level. We shortened it as much as we can. Everything is perfectly, you know, parallel, true, and as exact as it can be, at least to my skill set and the tools that I have. Uh, I think this is going to work absolutely great. So stay tuned if you like square body stuff there. I do have a couple more things coming um, on the K5 Blazer. We're going to be doing a 63 inch rear leaf spring swap. Never ending pile of crap that needs to happen to get things done around here. So kind of is what it is. But anyway, if you got any questions about doing this, let me know. Post it in the comments and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage.